Now, this year's title for Mr. South Africa went to a very, very deserving Heinrich Gabler. He joins us in studio today to share his uh, and share how his life has actually changed since winning the coveted title and what entails to be crowned as Mr. South Africa. So we are asking you on our socials, what have you always wanted to know about Mr. South Africa? Please don't forget to use the hashtag Afternoon Express with your answers. Let's take a look at his crowning moment. Your Mr. South Africa goes to Heinrich Gabler. Congratulations. Yeah, it feels like yesterday, I must say. I it's know. an amazing feeling. Well, actually, feeling. you were here for our birthday. Yeah, without a shirt. <laughs> without a shirt. And, uh, I yeah. was going to say I didn't recognize you with your clothes on. But you were here without a shirt on for our birthday. And then, like, the pageant was soon after that. Yeah. How did you feel when you are on the stage when they announced your name? It, it wasn't really an amazing feeling, uh, feeling Jenny. Yeah. Um, I, re I really didn't expect it, but I knew I, w I worked very hard. Yeah. So I, I felt it deserving. And I knew that a lot of... The majority of South Africa really wanted yeah. me to take the title. Yeah. And, I, and I hope that I can do justice and just uh, bring um, hope to so many people in this can country. Can I tell you, you had such huge support and so many fans who really, really did want you to take the title. And when I had read your story, I thought, this story has to be told because you are and can be an inspiration to so many people. And I think you were the best person to, oh, who could have won. Thank you so much. So yeah. let's get into that. Let's introduce. South Africa to their Mr. South Africa. I uh, like I think you were struck by tragedy at a very, very young age. And I think you've gone through so much in your life. And I think it's incredible you, that you're in a position now to share your story, to give a lot of hope and to, to inspire a lot of yeah. younger people. So take me through your, your childhood. Um, so, you were so often I, very young. Yeah, yeah, I was born in Somerset West. And I always yeah. say that Every young South African, either you want to play for Bafana Bafana or the Proteus or the Springboks, you know, yeah. sports really has an amazing impact on people's lives. And even the late and the great Nelson Mandela said that sport has a power to change a nation. Yeah. And, and I grew up wanting to become a Springbok rugby player. I yeah. really love sports and it gave me just a sense of belonging playing for a team. And I, I knew that I was blessed with talent. So that was me growing up in our backyard and, and we grew up quite poor. And, and it was me playing with a Coke bottle, you know, dreaming yeah. to become a Springbok. And, and at a very young age, I lost my mom in a car accident. And my father is from Germany. And he was working in Germany at that time, trying to support the family and, and, and build a, be a better future for us. Yeah. And he came back f for the funeral and he just left right after that. And that's when um, a family decided that myself and my two older brothers were, um, get put in an orphanage in Wellington. Yeah. And that's when I had to decide, you know, is that Heinrich, Either you can just sit back and, and say, oh, that's life, or you can really st keep on dreaming. You know, I, I can still believe yeah. that I do want to achieve my dreams one day. Sure. And, I, and, I, and I held on to that dreams. And I must say, my faith in the Lord helped me a lot. Yeah. And I believed as a child. And, and, and thank you for my Sunday school teacher saying that, you know, Jesus loves you and there's a yeah. plan for your life. And I held on to that. And then I must say, in my high school years, that's when you start questioning your life. You know, does God really exist? And sure. is there a future well, for my life? Well, did you stay in the orphanage the whole time? Yes. Like you're, and, so you grew up in the yeah, orphanage. Yeah. And, and, and Amazing story is Dawn, um, she's bragging now, Dawn Jorgensen at that time, she was married, and she used to fetch me on weekends and holidays, and at, yeah. at a point she said, Heinrich, but I want you to come and stay with us. I said, no, Dawn, I have to go back to the children's room. That's why I believe that I have an impact on other kids' lives and to really? inspire them to, to have my groupies around and say, guys, we, we are here, but we, we can stick together. And did you see other little kids around you getting adopted and then you just you chose to stay Yeah, there. one of my best friends got adopted and I must say it was quite hard to have seen him leave. But but you become this family at the orphanage and I was that guy, I was a leader at a very young age and the guys, yeah. guys, let's go and let's go and play on the sports field and let's, let's live our dreams out there because yeah. sport played a massive role and I'll always go back to the children. Did your brothers stay with you in the orphanage? Yes, yes, so yes. You also, so you stayed a family a there. Family I suppose there. That's, that's better that's than amazing. if one of you, yes, if you yes, had yes, been yes, separated, yes. that would have been terrible. That's true, yeah, yeah. But, but the, the, the kids in, in, in your household, because there was about seven households with 14 kids from, yeah. from baby yeah. to, to 18 years old, yeah. and that becomes your family as well, and you 
grow quite attached to each other. And t still today, uh, I, I must say that I'm a type of mentor for a lot of guys leaving the yeah, orphanage yeah. Um, out there today. I just wish that the success rate would be much higher because it's not that I, as much as I think that every guy that goes out of there has an amazing opportunity to go and study further. But now you're in a position to inspire To all inspire those, those guys, yeah, that's my So what happened dream. to you when, so you, you were studying and then you became a teacher, a sports yes. teacher? Yeah, 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 that's okay. quite amazing. So. I still I went on saying, okay, I want to become a professional rugby player because yeah. I have talents and I want to use my talents yeah. and I have this, this driven power inside of me. And the muscles. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And um, so I was studying to become a teacher. I knew that what, what happens if I do get injured? You know, I could always fall back into teaching. So I was coaching through all my years of, of university because yeah. I love sports and I yeah. could play. And then I, in my final year, I was I started coaching at the primary school where I grew up with yeah. a coach that coached me as an orphan boy. Oh. So that was quite special. And I was coaching most of the orphan kids in the orphanage at my at, at the primary Amazing. school. Amazing. And just there, Jeannie, I decided, Henry, there's nothing else that you want. I want to do. Yeah. I just want to work with kids. And I said, and I knew it was part of God's plan. I put my rugby dream aside because I knew that somehow I'll get a small contract or you know or overseas yeah. or something. Because I always said that I want to start earning money because that's something I didn't have. Yeah. And being a teacher, you know, you don't do it for the money. <laughs> so it's quite <laughs> ironic, you know, because you do it for the outcome and not the income. Exactly. And just there, I decided that I want to teach, and there's nothing else I want to do. Yeah. And I was blessed with the opportunity to teach in Malkwa Strand for yeah. about five years. And then something special as well, I always wanted to get back to Wellington and yeah. that I got the opportunity to go and teach at the primary school where I was at as, a, as an orphan boy, Yugena Primary in Wellington. Yeah. And most of the orphan kids were in my classroom. And, I can... and you know, to teach isn't necessarily being in a classroom is teaching children. The way you're speaking now is teaching because so many people are learning and, and, and learning from your experiences. Oh, yeah. So why did you decide to enter Mr. South Africa? Okay, so this is quite cool. In my um, matric year, I, yeah. I took part in the, in the high school pageant. And one of the judges was Dieter Voigt. He yeah. was Miss South Africa of 2007. Oh, as my mentor. And he came to me afterwards because there was a few interviews before the pageant. Yeah. And he said, Heinrich, your story is so amazing. I believe that you can you can inspire South Africa and inspire yeah. the world with this. You just keep keep on believing. And that night I went home and was like, dude, it was Mrs. South Africa that said he believed in me. And like, imagine yeah. I can become Mrs. South Africa one day and inspire so many people. Yeah. So it was this dream that I held on for 11 years, Jeannie, that yeah. finally... But you know why it's such an important story to share? Is because I think your life could have gone in very different yes, directions. Yes. Um, not having parents around you, you could have become a drug addict, a thief, an alcoholic. You could have become a really bad person, and yet you didn't. You went in a very, very, very right direction. So it's amazing how I think sometimes you think that you're a product of your upbringing, but yes. sometimes it can turn out... I mean, what do you think you went through that inspired you to be who you are today? Why do you think okay, you chose yeah. the good path? The good path is just that so many people were good for me growing yeah. up. And, and it's quite ironic, I want to start laughing, because my mom when I was about seven, eight years old, she used to take kids from the street and bring them home and bath them and wash them and clothe them oh, with my clothes. Oh, I could clothes. cry. You're killing me. So, it's, so you saw that goodness. I saw that and you remember my mom. that goodness And she from said, Henry, remember that kindness cost you nothing. It doesn't cost you a cent because we didn't have a lot. And she would, she would dress these street kids and then take them to the safe haven. Yeah. And a few years after, it was someone else looking after her kid. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Let me tell so, you, the goodness of your mother is still living in you. That's what my sister said Definitely. as well. Definitely. Yeah. She is in you. Yeah. That is so beautiful. Yeah, Thank you for being here today. We're going to chat to you a little bit okay, later. Perfect. Polly, our social media must be absolutely cooking right now. <laughs> What's happening online? Absolutely, Jeannie. We've got a question from one of our viewers. We've been asking them, what questions do you have? What did you always want to know from Mr. South Africa? And one of our viewers, Bianca Terry, has definitely sent through her question. And she's asking you, Heinrich, as a teacher, you said earlier, by profession, are you stopping this during your reign? Are you? It is, and I, and I think, um, is it Jack Ma, the Chinese billionaire? Yeah. <laughs> For now, I want to go and make as much money as I can yeah. to help and support our country. And, exactly. And, and, yeah, so it's, it's quite cool that... But while you're not officially teaching, teaching. you're still teaching. Exactly, and yeah. I can inspire so many more kids. I can go to schools, I can visit so many other schools and, and share my story with them. Exactly. So, yeah, I want to become and grow my foundation as big as I possibly can, Amazing. and that will help me change South Africa oh, for the bless better. bless you. Thank you so much, babe Bianca, for your question. Love it. <laughs> we 